Texas Tech men's basketball team motto is toughest team wins, TTW. And they proved just why that is with a dominant second half performance and victory over number 20 BYU. In today's video, we'll discuss exactly what led to that dominant second half and take a look at the new updated Big 12 standings as well as Ken Palm rankings and much, much more. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. And I'll be honest with you, this is the most excited I've been about a Texas Tech men's basketball team in a long time for the sheer fact of this. This team is very well coached. If you're excited about having Grant McCaslin as the head coach of Texas Tech men's basketball, like the video. If you're excited that you get to watch Pop Isaacs play in the Scarlet and Black, like the video. There are so many reasons to like the video. I can't name them all, but hit that like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell if you're excited about Texas Tech men's basketball right now. And while you're at it, you might as well go down to the pinned comment down below and type TTW. Again, toughest team wins. That is this team's motto, and they are proving just why that is with their Huge adjustment in the second half. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But type TTW down on the pin comment below if you love what you're seeing from this Texas Tech men's basketball squad. All right, let's jump into the recap because, man, talk about a tale of two halves. I mean, the Red Raiders looked, let's just call it what it was, awful defensively in the first half, almost giving up 50 points to BYU. BYU shot 10 of 20. From three, for those that can't do the quick math real quick, 50% from three. And it was easy for them. I mean, Texas Tech was going under every screen, giving BYU tons of room. Give credit to BYU from a screening standpoint and I guess a knocking down shot perspective too. Every shot that they took from three felt like they had a foot, maybe even two feet of separation when it came down to it. And when they have that many good shooters on that BYU roster, you know they're going to knock them down. Now in the second half, this is where everything changed. I thought in the first half, Texas Tech was not physical at all. In the second half, my goodness, it all changed. They were running through screens. They were going over. They were making sure that BYU knew they were there on every shot opportunity. And, and just don't trust me. Look at the numbers. BYU shot 10 of 20 in the first half. As I mentioned, they finished the game 13 of 39 from deep. They shot three for 19 in the second half, 15% basically, okay? And that was because of how physical the Red Raiders were in terms of going off of those pick and roll opportunities that BYU tried to create. They were running through screens. They were being physical with the hand checking and making the refs make a determination. Hey, is this a foul or is it not? Texas Tech was just more physical in the second half on both ends of the floor, and it paid huge dividends. The main guy that it paid off for was Pop Isaacs. He had a new career high in this one with 32 points. Warren Washington had 19 points and nine rebounds. Chance McMillan was dominant off the bench for the Red Raiders and provides an edge each and every night that not a lot of teams in the Big 12 have in terms of his athleticism. Because if you ask me who the most athletic player is on the Texas Tech men's basketball roster, I'm going to pick Chance McMillan. He's 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 an absolute dynamite when it comes to a vertical, how quick his feet are. And oh, by the way, he shoots north of 40% from three. He is a sheer athlete that is just a really good basketball player as well. He had 14 points off the bench for the Red Raiders. But again, the physicality was really the big thing for Texas Tech. And you noticed it on the defensive end and the pick and roll, how they were going over. But you also noticed it on the offensive end in the pick and roll because they weren't setting really good screens in the first half. Let's just, again, be critical, but give flowers in the second half, right? Texas Tech was just not physical at all. It almost felt like they were playing to BYU's game in the sense of BYU isn't a physical team. Not a knock on them at all. They're just not that physical. They're more of a finesse team. They shoot the lights out of the ball. They space really well, and they're really good at passing. Looking at you, Khalifa, my goodness, what a night for him. 21 points, and it felt like they were running the offense through him as much. Um, and a lot of BYU fans actually told me that in the comments that I got that wrong in the preview, and y'all are 100% right. He is a good passer and a good big uh, moving forward for the Cougars. But that's where I thought Texas Tech struggled is in the first half at least, was, hey, 
they played more towards BYU's game than their own game, and that totally changed in the second half. They'd come out, go on an 8-0 run to start the second half, get it down to nine points, and it felt like they were just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, and then boom, Texas Tech goes on a late run there to eventually win this game 85-78. to Just realizing this is the first time I think I've said the score um, in this video, so apologies five minutes in. But overall, again, tale of two halves, right? At one point, according to ESPN's game predictor, and take it for what it is, right? This thing is right and wrong all the time. I guess that's really the only two options, right? But anyway, BYU had a 95% chance to win this game at halftime. 95% chance. Texas Tech came out, completely changed everything they were doing, and they have a chance to compete each and every night because, again, I've said it in previous videos, but it's worth repeating at nauseum. Grant McCaslin and his coaching staff are 100% okay with putting their ego to the side, having a self-reflection moment, and being, did we get the game plan right? No, they're doing things we didn't expect. That's okay. Let's make an adjustment because we're smart, intelligent coaches that have proven they can win at virtually every level of college basketball. Let's put our heads together and find the best way to succeed. And they do that night in and night out. Now, does that mean they're going to win every Big 12 game? Hell no. This league is tough as hell, right? But Texas Tech is going to be in a great position to compete on a night in and night out basis in the toughest league in America. And we'll talk about it here in just a second in terms of where they stand. I think Red Raider Nation is going to like it quite a bit five games in. But before we get into that, give me your one word to describe the Red Raiders win over number 20 BYU on Saturday night at the USA. Shout out to Raider Riot too. Listen, I know a lot of people have been critical about the fans and everything. Really not my place. Um, in terms of judging fans for different circumstances and coming out. But I thought Raider Riot was absolutely phenomenal on Saturday night for the BYU game. So shout out to the students on that front, showing up and showing out and really making it one of the most impressive home court environments, if not the most impressive home court environment in the Big 12, right up there with the likes of Kansas, Iowa State, Texas Tech is in that conversation. There's no doubt about it. But give me your one word down in the comments below to describe the Texas Tech victory over the number 20 BYU Cougars. All right, here we go. Latest Big 12 standings and metrics for Texas Tech. As it stands right now, Texas Tech is tied for first at 4-1 and one in the Big 12 alongside of Kansas State. Some of y'all are going to ask, well, doesn't Texas Tech own the tiebreaker, which means they're in first place? That doesn't really matter in the regular season. Um, it more matters for seeding purposes if this happened going into Kansas City, right? So let's play the hypothetical game. If Texas Tech and Kansas State have the same exact record at first place going into Kansas City, Texas Tech would be the one seed in Kansas City for the sheer fact of they have the head-to-head -head matchup against Kansas State and the Red Raiders in Kansas State only play one time this year. Now, for other metrics outside of just the physical standings of where Texas Tech stands, the Red Raiders are now 30th, according to Ken Palm, and Texas Tech moved from 40 to 35 in the net rankings, which is a pretty big deal off of just one win, five spots. It is the Red Raiders' second quad one win of the year. Now, they'll have a chance to improve their resume because we know how the Big 12 works. Each and every night, it's almost a quad one win, um, regardless of who you're playing damn near, right? But Texas Tech has a huge two-game road stretch coming up. Um, against two teams that are currently in the top 25 and probably will be in the top 25 moving into next week. Now, that being said, Texas Tech actually has a week between games. They do not have a midweek game this week. It's almost like a bye week in football. That is going to help guys for Texas Tech, in my opinion, for the sheer fact of this. You look at Texas Tech, they play a shorter rotation. That means that guys are playing tons and tons of minutes. I think you're going to see a one-and-a-half, two-day window where Texas Tech really does a bunch of walkthroughs to allow guys to get rejuvenated and go into this next stretch of the Big 12. Because again, you're really only playing seven, eight guys if you're the Red Raiders in terms of meaningful minutes. That's going to take a wear and tear approach on their body moving forward in the most physical league in America. This is big for Texas Tech for the sheer fact of this four game stretch that we talked about with starting with Houston, having this game against BYU and then these two road games that we'll talk about here in just a second. If you go two and two, you feel really damn good about that because, again, it is virtually impossible to win on the road in the Big 12. Just ask Kansas. They've lost to UCF on the road in Orlando, and they just lost to West Virginia yesterday. 
it is hard as hell to win on the road in the Big 12. So Texas Tech getting this week off, I think, is huge. They'll have to find their rhythm a little bit as they move on. And next up, it'll be at number 15, Oklahoma, next Saturday, January 27th, with a 1 p.m. tip-off slated for ESPN+. Plus. Don't know who's going to be on the call there. You can obviously listen to Hacks on Guns Up Radio. It was one of the best in the business. But that is the next game for Texas Tech. The number 25 Texas Tech Red Raiders will travel up to Norman, Oklahoma, to face off against the number 15 Sooners next Saturday on January 27th with a 1 p.m. Central tip-off, and it will be on ESPN+. Plus. One more time, before we get out of here, a couple things. Give me your one word to describe this Texas Tech victory over number 20 BYU with a dominant 53-point second half. 53 points against the number four ranked defense in the country. Absolutely dominant in the second half on both ends of the floor for the Red Raiders. Just one of the really more um one of the more impressive halves that I've seen from Texas Tech, even dating back to the final four days on both ends of the floor. Again, 53 points scored, only gave up 30. You were dominant in every sense of the word on both ends of the floor in every aspect of the game. You just simply dominated the number 20 BYU Cougars who had the fourth ranked defense, according to Ken Palm, coming into this game. And you hung a 53 piece. You hung a 50 burger on them just in the second half. Just a dominant performance. And then one more time on the pinned comment, type TTW. If you're excited about Texas Tech men's basketball, toughest team wins. The Red Raiders definitely proved that in their victory over the BYU Cougars. I'm RC Maxfield reminding you, if you want the latest breaking news, rumors, and everything in between when it comes to Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, join the most engaging and most watched Texas Tech YouTube channel right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.